is Eric Swalwell, and I have the privilege and honor of representing California's 15th Congressional District. I've also been promised that I can uh, bank the hours here today toward my uh, MBA. Uh, so I will be counting on uh, receiving that course credit. Uh, but this is the area where I grew up. Uh, I know it very well. Uh, so many kids are limited in their potential and their opportunity uh, because uh, of where they grew up or where they come from. And that has to change. And, and that's what motivates and inspires me uh, is to make sure that no one is limited uh, by where they come from or who they were born to. And I think what can change that today, unlike any other time in our history, uh, is truly the innovation economy. So I wanna to talk to you briefly today about a few things. First, uh, in general, the innovation economy. Second, specifically how I think it can benefit our area, uh, the East Bay. And then third, I think the challenge in Washington uh, to overcome that. So we are at a point uh, in our history where very, the, very few of us will continue to use our hands uh, to participate in an economy and uh, earn a paycheck. The industrial economy uh, is largely going away in the United States. We have to, I think, reinvent ourselves as an economy. And I submit to you that the innovation economy is our path forward. So the first leg, access to capital. What do I mean by that? How is that a leg of the innovation economy? Well, if you're going to have innovation, inventors, technologists, uh, CEOs who want to start a company, they are going to need to have upfront access uh, to capital. We just passed last week in the House of Representatives the research and development tax credit to make the research and development tax credit permanent. So this would allow any business that does research uh, and development to have now a permanent tax credit. That had been an annual tax credit that was extended each and every year. But as you know in business, uh, if you have something that is only year to year to year, your outside investors are going to look at that and they're not going to see much certainty. So now Congress has passed and made permanent the research and development tax credit. Hopefully uh, the president uh, signs on to that. Right now in the Congress, we are working on ways we can bring down our tax rate while attracting business here in the United States, not just having corporate giveaways to, you know, incur to have companies pay nothing but take everything. But right now there are so many tax incentives that in incentivize companies to go overseas where they can actually deduct the costs of moving their company uh, overseas. And what has happened is because so many companies have moved overseas, they also have nearly a trillion dollars in overseas untaxed profits, having a brain trust of individuals. This area, Silicon Valley, the Tri-Valley, the 880 corridor, has thrived for so long because it has an educated workforce. If we are going to continue to be such an educated workforce, we need to make sure that our classrooms are preparing our children for this new economy. And as I talked about, so many of those classrooms I visited uh, have computers that are 10 to 15 years old. They have teachers that are ill-equipped to prepare these students for the skills in science, technology, engineering, and math. And so I, I firmly believe that every public school across America needs a pre-K through 12 STEM program, a fully implemented, fully implemented STEM program to prepare our children. So what we must do, I think, first and foremost, to have a risk-taking culture is to fix a broken immigration system. And I say risk-taking culture and tie that to immigration because there is a clear correlation between somebody who leaves their country, comes to the United States, to make life better for themselves and their family. If you're willing to leave your livelihood, leave your family, leave everything you've ever known to come to the United States, studies have shown, anecdote uh, stories have shown that you're more likely to take a risk here, start a business, create jobs. So I submit to you that the innovation economy is going to be powered by having access to capital, having a brain trust of individuals, and having gates that are open and welcome to immigrants who want to follow the rules and work hard just like the rest of us.
That's how we're going to get to an innovation uh, economy that's going to promise uh, and deliver uh, to you jobs and a future when you get your degrees. If we can get the resources to these students, the teachers to these students, and give the skills to the parents to reinforce at home what is being taught in the classroom, I think the innovation economy is every one of those child's way out, a way to defy their bloodline, to go to college and turn their own uh, course uh, and realize their own opportunity if and prosper. If you have interest in being so. a congressional intern, uh, let me know as well. We have fall internships available and in many cases we've been able to work and make sure the students uh, receive credit. I was a congressional intern back in 2001 for my member of Congress uh, and uh, it really did uh, open my eyes up to what government does and how it can serve and make lives better. So thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Shea. Thank you, Dr. Chung. And thank you, Cal State Spain. I also